I put together mostly aneurysm cases because uh, I was thinking, oh, sorry. You know, I, I really, I haven't, you know, we just, we don't see a ton of that where I am because it's a pretty hydrated region of the country. But, um, you know, I've always, I just have always used AngioJet for that most of the time. But it's a, it's a much more brutal device to get up in the head, but it's like really effective. So, so I'll, I'll just, I'll downstick the carotid and go right up the, or the, not the carotid, I'll avoid the carotid at all costs, downstick the jugular and go up with the sheath and just do it through that. And if you can get the, if you can get the big, um, the big angio jet up into the superior sagittal sinus, you'll, you'll open up all that stuff and it's fast. It's, it's just a little bit of a horse to stick it up there. Have you guys, have you guys used it a lot or? No, we've done, we just did a case with angio jet. We didn't use the number, but we did use the penumbra. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of where I am with that, but I think the penumbra stuff will probably work pretty good too, especially now that it's so much bigger. Uh, so this is a guy who had a distal basilar trunk and basilar apex aneurysm. So he was uh, 26 years old. He had a subarachnoid hemorrhage and uh, was awake with a headache, but then he re-ruptured uh, on his way over from the outside hospital and uh, became comatose. So he came over to us and uh, we just put a ventric in and um, he remained poor grade. And so this was his, uh, this was his angiogram. So this aneurysm is a little bit peculiar. It's actually... Um, I'd, somebody showed a similar one of these. I think Fernando, you showed something that was similar to this. So it's one of these like SCA aneurysms that incorporates the entire basilar apex and the SCA actually comes out of the dome of the aneurysm. But the entire um, basilar apex is involved by the aneurysm and the SCA, as it shows here, comes off distally right off the body of the aneurysm. And you can see this aneurysm wraps all the way around the basilar apex, incorporates both PCAs and then the origin of the other SCA. So the um, question is what to do. So clip reconstruction or deconstruct the aneurysm with coils or try some kind of crazy bypass situation. Um, you know, in a ruptured patient, uh, we just typically will go and try to do something endovascularly for these people, particularly in the posterior circ. So that's what it looked like on angiogram. So you have this huge uh, aneurysm coming off here, but it all communicates with the basal or apex. So uh, I put just a 4 by 11 scepter XC across the uh, aneurysmal segment and inflated it uh, as much as I could and just filled up the aneurysm with coils, knowing that we would deconstruct that SCA and that it was going to be occluded. What I can tell you is that even with the balloon inflated uh, maximally, that there were coils herniating around the outside of it, going up into the basal or apex portion of the aneurysm kind of demonstrating to me that the aneurysm actually incorporated the entire basilar and the basilar apex. So um, with the balloon remodeling technique, we were able to get this coiling. So we had to deconstruct the entire right SCA, and there's the coil ball in the SCA. And so you see this much of the aneurysm remains filling, and that's the part that circumferentially involves the distal basilar. So the guy has a ventric. He's got some subarachnoid hemorrhage, and so the question is, what do you do now? Um, pipeline now, stent coil now, balloon remodel it now, wait and stent coil. So what I did is um, just try to wean the guy's ventric as soon as we could. And so um, fortunately, he his blood resolved pretty quickly. We were able to clamp his EVD and get it out pretty quickly. So this is post-op day five scan. You see he's got a remarkably small infarct from his SCA deconstruction and really nothing in his brain stem. And so he's starting to emerge from his comatose state here getting a little bit of an exam back, and so things are looking a little bit better. And so once the EVD's out for a couple days, and we're confident that he's not going to get hydrocephalus, post-bleed day nine, um, pre-treat him with aspirin and Plavix. And so then we have this, and you can see the aneurysm is actually even a little bit more lobulated and larger than it was when we finished. And so the first stent that I used in this case, and I probably would do this case a little bit differently now, but I used a neuroform stent at first. And the reason I used that to build the first limb of a Y stent construct is because it is so open cell. So into the less involved limb of the aneurysm, I'll put the neuroform in. And then that's so easy to cross, you can easily get across it without knackering it. And so the idea is we'll put that through. And this is just the deployment of the neuroform like you guys were doing uh, in the model. And then we'll drive through that and we'll put an Elvis Jr. in the other side. And so the Elvis Jr. is a much better braided uh, configuration. It's much more closed cell, much better metal surface area covered. So we'll put that over the more involved side. And so, um, we'll eventually get the Elvis uh, deployed here. So we'll put a headway into the uh, side that we want to build the um, Elvis construct into. And then whenever you have two vertebral arteries, and especially if you're in a Y construct with a giant aneurysm, 
in my mind, if you want to really get the aneurysm completely coiled, you can never have enough microcatheter access into the aneurysm. So this is a nice young guy with two beautiful vertebrals. So we took total advantage of that and put a, a PX slim in the aneurysm uh, top, another echelon 10 in the aneurysm at the top, and then another PX slim into the um, coil ball there. So three microcatheters accessing, and then another microcatheter to put the headway through. Because once you get kicked out of a Y stent construct, it's so difficult to recatheterize the aneurysm. And I think the more catheters that you can have, the more access to the different compartments of something that's complex like this, the better. And really, the risk of catheterizing something like this at the basal or apex is minimal through a single neuroform. And so um, we got the, the uh, Elvis Jr. stent deployed in a Y configuration. And then we're able to drive past that through that with a wire. And then we put the uh, microwire into the headway. And that kind of marks the parent artery. Normally, this would be something that'd be really nice to do with the balloon where you can really confidently see the artery, but we don't really uh, have that uh, without doing an exchange or something here. So we just put the wire in that and then subsequently coiled through all the catheters all the way around the basal or apex. And so the idea is, is that where the aneurysm is located, it's all going to be dysfunctional in terms of any perforators being there or anything. We're hoping that they've been stripped off the artery and they're not uh, needed by the patient anymore. So we coil all the way around the basal or apex. And as you form the coil, as you know from doing balloon remodeling cases, you start to form a nice little circle that shows you where your reconstructed parent artery is on the native view. And so we just continue to coil until it's as occluded as we're going to get it. And then um, when you can't get any more coils in, we shot an angiogram. So you just got nice flow up his uh, basal or artery and around the coil mass. And so, you know, there's a lot of questions with this in terms of whether this is going to be something that's durable, but I do think that having the stents in place really improves the potential durability of something like this. And so this is his MR. This is a flare image. This is non-ischemic edema behind the giant or the large aneurysm and the coil mass. And this is his stroke from the SCA sacrifice. So this is what he looks like uh, the day after his procedure. So you can see he is uh, neurologically intact after the second stage of the procedure. Um, and so this is what it looks like a three month follow up. You can see how nicely the parent artery is remodeled how nice the parent arteries are uh, here on both sides. And then uh, this is a three month follow up again, showing that down the barrel view. And this is what it looks like at one year follow up. Uh, we got again, nice uh, continued follow up of this. So these constructs, the Y constructs, I think really do add to the durability of these types of uh, coiling procedures and doing a stage procedure sometimes is, is necessary to, uh, to use the devices. But I do think it's worthwhile, even in patients with uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage like this.